Ed here with the Digital Digest, and today I wanted to share my full review, the Digitally Digested segment, for the Sony SEL20TC. Now, this is a two times teleconverter that retails for roughly $550 US dollars. I will include a link in the description, and this was sent over by Sony for review purposes. In fact, I requested it because I wanted to see whether or not having this uh, multiplier on my reach would essentially give me the ability to get rid of my two to 600 mil G series lens. Even though I love it, it's a little bit too big these days for me personally, and the 100 to 400 is still excellent. So with the opportunity for this teleconverter to double that effective reach, I thought this was a pretty uh, good test to share with all of you, both for myself and for anyone else looking to determine whether or not it's worth uh, that $550 price point. And before you run out and try to buy this to use with any Sony full-frame e-mount glass, please remember it is only compatible with these two lenses, the 70 to 200 uh, mil f2.8 G Master it launched with, as well as uh, the Mark II version of that lens and the 4 and 600 mil prime G Master lenses. So at launch, only one lens was compatible, uh, compatible with it. Now you've got a pretty solid, mature lineup of telephoto glass from Sony. So I predominantly tested this with my a7r4. I also tested it out with my old and trustworthy a7r2. And here's the conclusion. As I stated at the top of this video, I really was aiming to see whether or not this teleconverter could make it so that I only need the 1 to 400G master. And for all intents and purposes, the answer to that question is yes. I think many of you out there that are looking at picking up uh, the 1 to 400 G Master and trying to decide whether or not you should spring to also get the 2 to 6. I think once you pick up this teleconverter, uh, you will be content with the 800 mil reach that it provides. Now it's expensive at 550, but when you put it into that perspective, that it's effectively going to make it so that you do not need to spend another two grand on the 2 to 600, I think it is worth every dollar. But you must be aware there is a trade off, of course, to using this teleconverter. You have uh, two stops of light loss and autofocus capability is diminished. Uh, it's not terrible, it's still functional, but it's something you have to get used to because especially on a camera like the a7R4, there is, that's probably the biggest part of the trade-off. The lighting, not so much because as long as you're in bright conditions, you know, prime time, you're not going to really find a problem with this. Uh, static shots, uh, birds in flight, a little bit more difficult, but against a blue sky, I didn't really have issue. Uh, now, when they were sitting at the top of a tree with, uh, you know, a lot of uh, stuff in the background, the canopies, essentially, um, that's where things get a little bit more tricky. So you're going to want to program one of the buttons on your respective lens to quickly switch to manual focus in those situations. I highly recommend that. Uh, now, with regard to whether or not I found myself saying, you know what, I'll sell the 2 to 600 mil because I can buy one of these for 550 and essentially put, you know, close to 1500 back in my pocket. In theory, that was a great idea. Now, in practice, because I love camera gear and really enjoy shooting, what this ended up making me do was enjoying the 2 to 600 even more than I did in the past. Why? Because, of course, now I had a 1200 mil reach, an 800 mil reach, and of course, all of a sudden, it's opened up a whole new breadth of capability. And by the way, this does a great job with macro as well. So this was counterproductive for me personally, because, you know, had I only owned the 1 to 400, I think I would have been more than satisfied adding this and, you know, the 2 to 6 would drop off my shortlist. But because I own both and I tested both, I just found that, of course, now with that 1200 mil reach and the fact that the G-Series already does a really nice job, um, I kind of fell in love with using it on both. So this did backfire for me personally. But again, if you own or are looking at buying just the 1 to 400 and the teleconverter, you will not be disappointed. Now, as long as you understand those trade-offs. And even though I didn't get to test this with something like an A9, an A9 Mark II, an A1, uh, where autofocus is superior, um, I would imagine it's going to fare better there um, on at least the autofocus side of things. Now, uh, another thing that I noticed using both of these, even though I just gave it high praise, both in the 1 to 400 G Master and the 2 to 6 G, is that it does, in my opinion, suit the 1 to 400 G Master uh, 
be better overall in terms of performance. Why? Because, of course, the 1 to 400 is more compact, but more importantly, it's a little bit faster than the 2 to 6. And so ultimately, losing the two stops of light uh, along with that hit on autofocus performance, I think you will inherently be better served with the 1 to 4. Does that mean it doesn't do well on the 2 to 6? No, it's just something I think the majority of users need to know. And of course, you know, things didn't get much better or worse overall when I threw it on my old trusty A7R 2 It's just something you need uh, to be aware of that lighting and autofocus will be your challenges. But I don't think that's really an issue, uh, you know, for anyone that's shooting in bright light conditions, you're going to be able to use this successfully. Um, so, you know, I didn't spend that much time with this teleconverter, but enough, uh, again, to shoot with both of these, and it just makes me want to go out and use them uh, both more. So in all likelihood, I am going to pick up one of these. I do wish the pricing was a little bit more aggressive. I mean, 548 US dollars for a teleconverter is definitely a big ask, but when you take into account that it turns uh, this G Master lens into, you know, 800 mil of reach, and does so in still a very effective way, and I'm not seeing any sort of uh, degradation of resolution or image quality. Occasionally, I've seen a little bit of vignetting, but that to me is ideal for what you'd want out of a high-quality teleconverter, even though this is uh, priced higher uh, than many will maybe want to take on. And I'm just glad that I did ask Sony to send it over, because I've always wondered about uh, employing it and thinking that basically the rub would be too great, the trade-off wouldn't be worthwhile. Um, I didn't think I'd end up in the position I am now where I want it, and I don't want to sell either of these because all of a sudden I've got, you know, a compact 800 mil that can go anywhere, and then when I know I need that additional reach, the bazooka comes out. Um, I can only imagine how these perform with the 400 mil and 600 mil Prime G Masters, uh, the 70 to 200, I'm personally less interested in, but I can also see why people would love to have that uh, glass paired with this, especially since it's prime and faster than either of these, and then all of a sudden, you know, you've got a 400 mil reach. So it makes perfect sense. Uh, but if, like me, you're really focusing on that extra, uh, you know, really going beyond what is typically accessible, especially at a reasonable price point, this does complete the package. Now, if you do not want to give up two stops of light, you can go with the 1.4. I did not test that, but if I presume it performs essentially the same, but slightly better than the two times, there you'll, you're only going to lose one stop of light. And, uh, you know, I would imagine the autofocus takes less of a hit, but even if we call it a wash, that's still going to be excellent. Now, it's exactly the same price. I'll include a link for that as well, but I personally, just like I only wanted to check out the two times, I would stick with the two times because to me, it doesn't really make a hell of a lot of sense to get your feet wet with a teleconverter and make those trade-offs unless the reward is going to be substantial. And a 1.4 uh, times reach isn't, in my opinion, that substantial. Here, it changes the way you can use both of these lenses. And the best part, I think, is that, forget that it, the fit and finish and the match is perfect, it doesn't really add any weight. Of course, that's the beauty, especially with the 1 to 400. You know, with the 2 to 6, I really don't want to make that lens any heavier than it already is, but considering what we're able to accomplish with this teleconverter, I think it is a must-have for anyone who, again, focuses on uh, shooting wildlife or uh, wants to, you know, really take it uh, to use for any form of macro uh, photography, because that is where it excels. So, Again, I can easily recommend this. Anyone who's been wondering since 2016, like myself, whether or not it would make a good addition to your gear bag. If your story sounds at all like mine and you want to be able to use a camera like the a7R4, a7R2, I would also imagine the a7R3, I don't own it anymore. And of course, uh, as I mentioned earlier, the a9, a9 Mark II or a1 and get the most out of uh, your telephoto experience and macro as well. I don't think you're going to be disappointed as long as you understand the light loss and autofocus uh, trade-off, which if it were too great, I would in this video be telling you to avoid this. But considering how easy it is to use, I don't see that rub being uh, too much of an ask here. So at the end of the day, it's really about pricing. And if you're going to save, again, that $2,000 picking up the two to six, it is absolutely a no-brainer. So really dig this SEL uh, 20TC. 
you know, if Sony were to revamp it, that would be great, but it doesn't seem like they have any plans for that, considering its compatibility list is current uh, with all of their uh, best telephoto options here in 2021. Any questions or comments, please feel free to post them. Hit that like button, and as usual, please feel free to subscribe, and please stay safe. Later.